for thanks. So this is actually a talk that I gave uh, to a bunch of professors at an engineering education conference. So this may not be, uh, hopefully it's not boring, because these guys, everyone else I've seen is just fantastic. It's really exciting. So um, I'm from mechanical engineering at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm going to talk about this new curriculum that we've started uh, just a couple years ago for the undergraduates. Um, but f the first thing I want to do is, is um, I'd like everyone to, I'd like everyone to point to the sky. Point to the sky. Look, okay. Look around and see how you're pointing. See how other people are pointing. All right. So pretty much everybody is is doing this, which is which is normal. Um, there's a thing that, that has anyone heard of the thumb generation? The thumb generation is this thing in Japan where people do this SMS, where the thumb becomes a dominant finger. In fact, it becomes such a dominant finger that when they point to the sky, they do this. They push uh, doorbells. They they do everything with their thumb. So. This, the, thing that, the thing to take away from this is that um, technology changes people, and, and we have to change the way we teach because of it. When I grew up, I, I was watching TV. I, I learned everything I did was through this push model. And if, a lot of professors, they lecture with the, you know, the chalk and talk. They sit up there, and they, they push information into the kids. Kids today are, are used to interactive games, um, using the web, exploring things like that. So it's very different than uh, the, it's more of like a poll model. And what, what I think we have to do is we have to change the way we teach to match, to do an impedance match with a student. So the, tr the traditional way of doing education is um, we'll do something like this Navier-Stokes equation and people will go to a lab, you have a theory part, you have a lab part, in the lab they, they look at a wind tunnel and they observe uh, the flows and things like this. This is something we call phenomenological observation. We want to change that. We want to make it better by essentially ingraining the theoretical concepts by using design. Get the students to des design things so that they actually have to apply the theory, learn why the theory is important, develop the skills that they actually use in industry later. There's a secret, which I guess will remain a secret. Um, we're going to try, um, we try to do something we call this human growth model, uh, where it starts out with a baby, you're, you have this phenomenological uh, phenomena, as you get older, we start to do some of the directed learning, and later on, I'm not talking fast enough, um, we have the, uh, we, kids start to become adolescents, and we start to try to get them to be a little bit more independent and what they do. So here's, here's the, uh, we, do, we have a curriculum which we span through three years as, uh, from freshman to um, uh, junior and they, we eventually get more and more independent. So here's an example of a sophomore lab where they had, they had a goniometer which they measured the, the angles of the, the legs and then they have to simulate it and then they build it. Um, uh, they learn about synthesis and creation. This is non-linear -ela elasticity of a uh, rubber band. Essentially what they do is they model they have to come up with a good model for a rubber band, like a bungee cord. In this case, this is the third floor building, and we have thrown a GI Joe doll off the the, 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 the building. Uh, they have to. We didn't tell them the length or the weight of the doll, doll, but they have to develop a system that can, if you watch carefully, won't hit the, the GI Joe doll. Will come down and not hit the floor. There it was. Um, and they actually did really well. Uh, most of them actually got it to be really close, um, except for a couple, which you know destroyed the GI Joe doll. Luckily, we had a couple lectures. Uh, another example of another lab is um, for heat transfer, uh, where uh, we gave them the theory behind heat transfer. They had, we had a fictional company, and they had to design a, a heat sink for a future iPod device. Um, we, did, we told them the theory, but we didn't tell them what to do other than the theory. They had to come up with their own experiments. Um, later on, we actually didn't give them the theory. We, didn't, we gave them a problem. We said, okay, you have to develop a, a vibration absorber. No reference books, no, no theory, no instructions. Just said, okay, here's the problem solve it. Um, and uh, one of the things that we learn is that you learn a lot more from failure than success. Um, what, what we ultimately wanted was something like this, where you had a two-mass system with two springs. People came up with these crazy ideas with pure dampers and, and things that just didn't work. Um, one of my mistakes was saying that, okay, this is not going to work, but I want you to do it anyway, which they really hated. But they learned a lot from that. Another th project that we had that was a lot of fun is this, uh, what we call a paper aqueduct. They had to build um, uh, an aqueduct with cardboard and Elmer's glue. Uh, and see how much water they could do. So it's developing a system, to do, doing experimentation and analysis, predicting how much water they could develop, could actually shift from one place to another without the system breaking, things like that um, is what they learned. People skills are really important. So they also learned things about teamwork. Um, one of the things we had them rate each other. So we said, okay, if you were a manager on a team, you had to distribute, you had a $10,000 bonus and you had to distribute it among your teammates, how would you do that? How, how much money would you give to each? We also had this other thing which was, um, we want them to learn about uh, how easy they are to work with each other. So um, they actually work with all the other students and they rate each other and at the end of the year we, we show them how well they did. And it's actually really useful information for them to have. So um, lastly, when we surveyed the students, 
um, most of them actually claim that they learned more in the lab than in any other class they ever had, um, which I don't actually believe is true. I think mo mo most of it is that they think that they learned because that was where they the information was ingrained. The last thing was just that we had uh, enrollments was up, and you know we always have this up curve, and that's it. Thanks. Yeah.